Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening to this podcast. And if you're someone like me who at one point did not know how to make a podcast, you can try the Anchor app. It is free. There are tools right on the app to help you make your podcast. It is super easy to use. They will distribute your podcast for you on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and other major platforms. If you want to make money from your show, you can do that with no minimum listen- listenership. And it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. You can download the Ag- Anchor app for free in your app stores or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, sir. <laughs> What's going on? Not much. What are you doing? Uh, just, uh, just wrapping that uh, bracket up and have the Dodgers-Phillies game in the background because the Yankees played early. Yes. Did they win today? They did, 5-2. Uh, to two. So, uh, another they, another series. They've been winning a lot lately. Thank they've, been, they've been benefiting from an easy schedule. Their their next series is, is the White Sox, so that'll be a little tougher. Uh, I feel bad for the Mets. Their their next schedule coming up is pretty uh, devastating. So, did they lose today? Or are they losing? I know they're playing Washington. I didn't see yet. I haven't really been able to watch. I had was hanging out with the kids for a little while, and then that was really it. And then I was trying to make some uh, last minute notes. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I was uh, looking up the career of Lorraine Bracco. Found out some stuff I wasn't aware of, so we'll get into that for certain. Okay. All right. Uh, what's uh, what's something good you watched this week? Well, I saw Suicide Squad. Okay. It's, it's getting a lot of hate, but I enjoyed it, but it did have more of a Marvel feel than a DC feel, and I'm more of a Marvel kind of guy. Okay. So that's... um. I started a rewatch of uh, Sons of Anarchy, very one of my favorite shows. Okay. And uh, also caught What If. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I liked the whole aspect of what would happen. You know. I enjoy. I watched. Uh, I watched What If this morning. Yeah, it was. It was really good. How they did Peggy Carter. Did they give? Her, did they give her the name Captain Britain or what? Did they say that on screen? I don't remember. They said Captain Carter. They used that a lot. Captain Carter. Okay, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. And I, I don't know if you read this, but they said that this was going to like tie into the MCU somehow. Well, I think it's going to have something to do with the whole multiverse thing. Yeah. So that'll be it'll be cool to watch. I like I like Jeffrey Wright as the the narrator there, the Washer. Oh, he is so good. His he's got like that voice that like you know really just ties you in. Every yeah, everything he does, perfect voice for uh, a narrator. He, he's he's going to be Commissioner Gordon in the new Batman. Yeah, yeah. So he's we'll see a lot of him uh, recently. What uh, what season of Sons are you on? Ah, uh, I'm going slow. I'm already on season three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a show that I binged. Yeah, like 2013, and I wound up watching like the whole thing up until the last season in like three weeks, and then the last season I was just episode to episode. And I thought it ended really well. It does what a show like The Sopranos did to, at, in its last season, where it's just like, let's just put the f- pedal to the floor and go. And that's what they did with Sons. That's what they did with Sopranos. I enjoyed it. They wrapped it up really well, I feel. Uh, I like everything, like, you know, closed off nicely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I watched, I just, before we started, uh, the season premiere of Hard Knocks. How was that? How was that? Who was the Cowboys again? It's 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 Dallas this season, yeah. And I'm so glad to have like a normal season because last year it was the Rams and the Chargers, and it was mostly because of the pandemic. Like half of the show was just us watching people get COVID tests, so it was awful. It was maybe I I, I love Hard Knocks so much, and this was just. That was such a disappointing season, and you know nobody's fault. But my favorite, my favorite season of Hard Knocks was the Cincinnati Bengals because I love Chad Johnson. Oh, so funny story about that season. Um, that was, I believe, it was, I want to say, 2012, 2013, something around along those time. And that was Tyler Eifert's rookie year, and they showed like a clip of him like doing yoga and meditating. And like an idiot in my fantasy football draft, I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I got inside knowledge on Tyler Eifert. And I wound up taking him in like the second round. 
No, yeah, that didn't. Yeah, uh. didn't pan out. No, so oh. I, I don't. Uh, I don't go to Hard Knocks anymore for scouting advice. Yeah, but it it's a, it's a good show. The first episode is really good. It was good to see. Uh, for me, that's like not the first preseason game or the Hall of Fame ceremonies when you get the first episode of Hard Knocks. That's kind of like for me how it feels like football's back. That that is that, that's like opening day. I understand. Uh, uh, anything else you watch? Yeah, so I'm about halfway through. I started a rewatch of Succession. Okay. When I saw the the trailer for the early teaser, they put out like an early teaser. It's only like a minute long for season three. Okay. And I I was I was amped up for that. And I'm about not there's like twenty there's twenty episodes. I've done about nine over the last like three weeks. So I'm about halfway there, and I'm ready for season three. Such so, such a good show. I got a great, really good show. We'll start off with our actor deep dive here uh, we're gonna do uh lorraine brocco today great actress yeah yeah and you know i didn't when i when i think of her obviously you think of the goodfellas and the sopranos roles those are her two her two big ones but i also started i was like when i was looking at her imdb i was like oh okay she was in riding with cars with boys she played leo's mom in the basketball diaries she was in radio flyer medicine man all these movies that kind of like came came back to me in retrospect on her career because she was nominated for an uh an academy award for best supporting actress for goodfellas and she was nominated for four emmys for her role as dr melfi what do you think 50 years from now people will will remember her most for it it, let's just say it's going to definitely be goodfellas or sopranos are going to be her biggest roles that she's noticed for um she was in a lot of tv movies too Um, yep and she was in getting gaudy that was a a decent one she was in sea of love Uh, a lot of people don't remember her in this but she was she had a small role in hackers with okay lee and johnny lee miller yes um matthew Lillard was in that too one thing i found really interesting and it's like a really like you know like a connection she was in the TV movie of Taken Pelham One Two Three. Okay. James Gandolfini was in a theatrical release of Taking a Pelham One Two Three. Right. I think that's pretty, pretty good coincidence, right there. Yeah, definitely. I didn't know. I didn't even know there was a TV version of Taking a Pelham One Twenty Three. Late nineties, it came out. I think it was ninety nine, but there was a TV version, and she was in it. Okay. So, that, but yeah, she's done. She's got a lot of acting credits, but. She's mostly going to be known. I, I feel Dr. Melfi is her biggest defining role. Yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to agree there. I didn't even know she was she was a fashion model before she became an actress. Really? I didn't know that as well. Yeah, in the 70s and, you know, a little like TMZ stuff, which is usually not my lane. But I didn't realize she was in a 12-year relationship with Harvey, Get- Harvey Keitel. And she was also married to Edward James Olmos. Oh wow! I didn't know. Yeah, but usually not my lane. The TMZ, the TMZ stuff. I don't think that's a lot of. That, that's not even in our wheelhouse. Team, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was some uh, nuggets that I dug up when I was doing my uh, my internet research on her. So, so yeah, yeah, I enjoy her. She's great in this role. The amount of chemistry they have, they, they and. Most of the show, you know, it's Tony going through his situations, but that show is really in that room. Like, that that's where most of the show takes place, in that room with them two, talking about everything, just the talking. And I sent you an article earlier. It was actually sent to me by my wife because she knows what we're doing here. And it's like, really, a lot of people would skip those scenes because they don't really, like, you know, they'll just skip them because they feel like they slow down the show, but... Really, that is the show right there. That, that in that office, it's the show. I would say that the, the Dr. Melfi scenes are like the hamburger bun and the, re- the rest of the show, the main storylines with Tony and his actual family and then his business family. Those are like the hamburger. Oh, definitely. But like, like you said, that the bun that closes it all together. That's absolutely the show. So, yeah, scenes are, and it's just mostly most of to be nominated four times for an Emmy for a role where you're mostly one-on-one. I mean, she has other scenes throughout the show that we'll talk about in other episodes where, you know, you get to know her outside life a little bit, but most of her scenes are just her and Gandolfini 
kicking it one-on-one. Yeah, you don't see her in a lot of scenes other than in that room, but those are good too. But those those in the room and the power that they the, they feed off each other, their chemistry, that's it's it's amazing. Yeah, that's why I'm that's why I, I agree with you. That this will be what she's remembered for, and then probably one one a Goodfellas. Oh yeah, Goodfellas is. But see now, I, I feel a lot of more people in these generations are not going to really know Goodfellas unless they're told about it. That's a shame. <laughs> it really is a shame because it was so back in the nineties. That was like the movie. If yeah. you're talking about those kind of like you know those mobster type movie, that was the movie. Yeah, and and I'm sure you and I have had this talk before, and I've had this talk with other friends. How, where do you go with mafia projects from here? Because in the '90s, you had uh, Goodfellas, Casino, movies like Donnie Brasco. Even in the '70s, The Godfather, Godfather Two, and then the The Sopranos, Boardwalk Empire, all these elite movies and TV shows. Where do you where do you go to raise the bar? from here it's just like a general thought i have see it's difficult because also in this day and age a lot of that stuff is frowned upon so a lot of the stuff that was okay in the in the 70s 80s and 90s that people enjoyed it's not the same feeling that they get right and it's it's hard to see where they would go for a project like um a lot of the projects they do now really fall flat on their face, I feel, because they are not staying true to the time because they're trying to be politically correct. And I feel like if you're going to be politically correct, you're not going to make a good mobster movie anymore. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, No, I'm, I definitely agree with that. There's a movie out. I don't know if you've heard of it or saw the trailer. I might have sent it to you. I don't – maybe. The one with Harvey Keitel is Lucky Luciano. Oh, no, not uh, – Beanie Siegel? Uh, Meyer, he plays... Uh, Meyer Lansky. Yeah, yeah. No, not that one. Okay. I did see that one, and I'll probably check that out, but, you know, how many more Meyer Lansky movies do we need? None. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll check it out, but it seemed like just it was a, a paycheck project for Keitel. I, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll be wrong. But there's a, there's a movie out called The Birthday Cake, and it it's with Lorraine Bracco, uh, Vince Pastore, uh, Val Kilmer's in it, Ewan McGregor, and it looks like it's from 2021. It's I'll send you the trailer after we record. Um, it's getting killed, but the trailer makes it look really good. The reviews are shit. Yes. <laughs> but I saw the trailer and I was like, I kind of want to see this, even if it's even if it's not good. I still want to check this out. Check this out for myself. I'll send you the trailer after we record. But anyone listening, uh, it's called The Birthday Cake. You can check the trailer out on YouTube. It looks like it's decent. So I was kind of surprised to see it getting savaged. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break and then we will dive into the episode 46 long. Episode two titled 46 long. So I have a, I have a take here on this one. Okay. Let me hear that. I think the show would have been fine. The show was perfect as it was, but I think if this was the pilot instead of the actual pilot, I think it would have been fine too. I could see that, I, 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 but I, I will tell you, this is one of the episodes that really starts to drive the enamor of Tony Soprano. Absolutely, it was. It, it's it's up there. One, uh, it's like a great episode. I, I feel like it, a lot of good, a lot of good parts in this. It's very hard to pick a great scene too, and I know that's going to be one of our topics. So there was a lot of good scenes. I've got a lot here, and we just we just the opening scene. Where they're just they're counting money and they're watching the the interview about uh, life in the mafia today, and it's just them just dialoguing with each other. Uh, Pussy and Chris have they're talking about like cloning, and <laughs> Pussy thinks they're talking about sheep, and Chris is talking about cell phones. And he's like, and it w- was one quote. He's Chris says cloning. Mexicans are huge into that because they work as fucking valets. <laughs> Pussy's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Talking about you as sheep, I was like, it kept going, and it was just so great. And then to hear Tony, and because back then the Italians really didn't care for, I believe it was Rudy Giuliani at the time. Then not going to clone the New York City man. So, <laughs> a lot of good funny, like that whole scene was like just 
I'm and kidding. still he randomly is like he's like princess die <laughs> you think you think the royal family had her whacked <laughs> what <laughs> just they're just saying random things it's it's really good i i enjoy that opening scene and i think i believe that's the only time they did a, a pre theme show theme song scene I think there might be one other time, but I think you might be right. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, but I li- I liked it. it, even if it was a little change of pace for the show. It was, it was good. Yeah, if I'm not, I I could have my facts wrong, but I think that was filmed two years after the pilot. Correct. Correct. So the pilot was filmed in 1997. Um, they actually this is a this is an according to the internet. This is something I read on the internet. They initially rejected it. And, and I think you had mentioned in our first episode that they wanted to make it a movie. Yes. And then that got scrapped and they decided to go with a show two years later. So they picked it up for 12 episodes. So that's how each up each season up until season six is 13 episodes. So they did the pilot and then um, 12 more episodes for season one. And that's what this episode has kind of like a different feel to it than the pilot did. Well, like it, it looks a little different. It looks a little more high quality. I can say it's I, well. My honest, my honest feeling on that is I feel that the show got picked up because of this episode. Yeah, I can see that happening because the episode was just so like put together nicely, and it really, like I said, starts to set the tone of the series. I think there's two instances in the show where it takes. The, I think the two biggest leaps that the show takes in terms of quality are from the season one finale to the season two premiere. And also from the pilot to this episode. Got to agree with you. Um, one, one of the things we'll be talking about in the nitpick is Tony's accent too. We mentioned that it, it's crazy <laughs> how more Italian he becomes in the second episode. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll table that one. We'll hold we'll hold that off. I have a couple of uh, nitpicks too that we'll get to uh, later down the line. Um, we'll go into best scene now. I got I've got four of these. Ren, we already talked about the opening scene, just the the dialogue there, and they're just counting money. It just sh- it shows you who these guys were, and it just kind of like inserts you into their world right away. Is there anything else you wanted to mention have- about that scene? Uh, about that scene, though, it just shows you the, the dynamic that they have together. And you see that they're, how close they really are, which you didn't get an, a sense of in the first episode because they're all over the place. But yep. in, in that episode, in that scene right there, you saw the closeness between the characters. Absolutely. Um, I have two scenes that are my favorite in this. I, I only picked two because they were just two really scenes that also like that will go under the don't forget about it either because they were just one was the power struggle okay um between when they had to sit down between jackie tony and junior okay i have that in mind too yeah that was a great scene to get. like you see the dynamic and you see the fact you see that they say they don't want that power they don't want that who wants to be boss but they both want it. you can see it in their eyes that they both want that power well it's this is a uh... I have in my don't forget about it, but we can do that now. Jackie saying, Jackie saying, like, uh, maybe I should name a successor because he's he's about to die of cancer. And you could see Tony says in this day and age, who wants the fucking job? And you see kind of Junior roll his eyes, and you know they're both full of shit. They both want, oh yeah, they both want that position. I got to agree. And then the other scene that really got to me: nothing was said, nothing was done, really. Um. The scene when he's packing away Olivia's house. Okay. That was a big scene. Like, you see the emotion and the rawness. Because nothing was said, no words, but you just see the... That's acting right there. Like, you you believed he was devastated about it. Like, like him getting rid of his mother's house. Like, yeah. packing everything away. And you see he has the mini panic attack with it. I just thought that was a really powerful scene. And the, the scene also where they're checking her into Green Grove and the I guess the administrator there at Green Grove is trying to make Livia feel good about being there and just her stares. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when she gives she gives her that anecdote 
uh, and I'm not going to say in Italian because I'll, I'll butcher it, but she, she gives her some anecdote in, in Italian and they all kind of, oh, Carmela actually says to her, what does that mean? <laughs> and she says, time and, ba- time and patience turn the mulberry leaf to silk. And you can see <laughs> Livia's just like stare. She wants to kill everybody in this building. <laughs> she would set that building on fire if she could at that moment. <laughs> Absolutely. She was, she was, she had a strong episode here. She was, she had a lot of good one liners, but I thought, I thought particularly the scene with uh, her and Tony, where Tony's telling her that we're going to green Grove. And she says, we'll take the carving knife out of the ham and stab me. And she's like, here, here. It's just, it's a really good scene. That's, that's another good scene. What are some of your favorite scenes from the episode? So I got a couple more here. I like, um, Pussy and Polly in the coffee shop. I actually when, have, I have I have one of those quotes is one of my <laughs> quotes for the episode. Yeah, well, well the second scene, well, first Polly Polly is like talking about how we wouldn't we need we need Pootsie if if we didn't give if they didn't give us the gift of their cuisine. Yes, and, and Pussy's just like take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the, the later, I think they were in were they in an actual Starbucks. Or it was like it was like a generic Starbucks. I think where it just I think it was a Starbucks headed, but they couldn't make it a Starbucks. Okay, <laughs> and t- Polly's just staring at all this stuff on the wall, and plus he's like, again with the rape of the culture. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, and then he just takes the, the espresso, yeah. puts it in his jacket, and leaves. Yeah, like the, the he takes the biggest thing on the rack. There were so many other smaller things that he could have stolen, but he took like the biggest thing that just made it completely obvious that he sh- he just shoplifted. And um, let's see the opening truck jacking with uh, Chris and Brendan. I thought the truck driver saying, "I need to be scathed," <laughs> and then uh, Chris is like, "You want to be scathed?" And then they just start beating the shit out of him, and he's saying, "Thank you." <laughs> As they're beating his ass, and then he just, and then he kicks him in the stomach. And goes scathed, scathed, and <laughs> they just walk away. Yeah, yeah, really, really good scene. Um, I think. Let me see if I had any others written down. No, I think we talked about the four: the, the opening scene, the truck jacking, coffee shop, uh, Tony and Junior, Ch- Tony Junior, and Jackie sit down. One thing I thought was uh, interesting about another thing about the sit down is we'll see throughout the show how Tony is like really resistant to any type of authority. We'll see it later on. We'll see it with junior kind of right away. We'll see it later with Johnny sack. We'll see it with uh, Carmine senior and Phil, how he really just is totally resistant to any type of authority. But when Jackie told him those kids pay restitution to junior, Tony just put his hands up right away. and was like, done. No problem. It just shows like how much he respected Jackie. Oh, I think I think there was a lot of respect in that one, and you'll see you'll see the effect it has later on. I think in a couple, more, actually in two more episodes, you'll see that when everything goes. But yeah, that was tough on him. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, uh, don't forget about it. This is the category where we talk about things that happen in the episode that we're going to need to remember for later. We already cited the one during the sit down where. Jackie talks about naming a successor. Um, That's going to have huge implications on later. Uh, One I had here was Chris complaining to Tony about not being made. I think that's a good one to bring up. I I actually had that one as well. And because of the fact that that's going to be very big in in getting into season two, that's going to be a big part of season two. Yep, absolutely. It's going to be a big theme. Um, let me see. I didn't have any others. I, I only had the one actually, so that was what I had on that. Okay, I got one more, and that's uh, I thought the scenes with uh, Georgie not being able to use the phone. Oh, I actually did have I have Georgie on here. The, the that's gonna be going like you know the beatings get worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's gonna culminate in something. But yeah, the the first one, he just, and I, I think at the end of that episode where Tony just smashes his head with the phone. I think the audience collectively just wanted to do that at that point. Like, how does this, if, if it was Livia on the phone and she couldn't, and she couldn't figure it out, we'd be like, okay, that that's an older woman. No problem. But this is like a 40 something year old man who should be fully capable of using a telephone. And he, he just can't, can't grasp it. 
mentioning that, I think that goes big into the final um, therapy session right before he walks out because she says you could be angry. You could, you should be angry. And he says he's not. But that shows his anger. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely thought on that one. Um, uh, you have any other ones? No, I think I, I yeah, I think we covered covered them all. Let me see. Yep. Yep. I got the three. Uh, Jackie naming a successor, uh, Chris complaining to Tony, and then Tony beating up Georgie. Those were those were my three. Uh, what you got? Some quotes. Yeah, let me say I got a whole bunch here. Um, oh, another scene. I we could talk about this scene too. The we're, when we're introduced to Mikey Palmisi. Oh, that jerk off! <laughs> I hate him so much. I'm I'm glad what happens happens, but yeah, he is. You see the the arrogant douchebag that he is in that one scene. Yeah, well, Tony just walks up to him. He's like, "Hey, Mikey, how's the boy?" He's like, "What boy is that, Tony? It's like the one you sleep with." <laughs> uh, and you could you could tell like Mike isn't a guy who gets talked to like that by many people, but he just had, he it's that was Tony. He just kind kind of had the smile about it. Oh, and and the fuck face itis uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was another one that was just really. Oh my god! The way he just—he always abuses him. And, yeah. Oh, there's gonna be a good. There's gonna be a good, uh, good scene and good mention in the uh, episode four. Uh, I'll, I can mention that now. But yeah, it's episode four is one of really the tones. It sets everything in tone. So in two more episodes, everybody will get to hear what we have to think about that one too. Yeah, definitely look forward to that. Um... When the fake um, Martin Scorsese walks through the club, and Chris is trying to get his con- attention by mentioning like one of his like least popular movies, he's like Marty Kundun. I liked it. Was that fake? That was not uh, Marty Scorsese. The actor's name was. Um, hold on, I have it here. It was the 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 Anthony Casso. Okay. Just uh, and if you look at his IMDb, it's just like mobster priest like a lot of just background characters director here new york post reporter so a lot of like not really a household name kind of nope. like a, a that guy fair enough on that one um what are some of the quotes you have let me think uh oh uh <laughs> tony telling livia there's a room available at green grove and she goes of course it's available somebody died <laughs> That was good too. I like that. Uh, one of my favorite, one of the, my favorite quotes is in the beginning of the episode, not the beginning of the episode, but the when he wakes up early and he comes down and they talks about the science teacher. Yep. And the science teacher's uh, what's it called? The, the car was stolen. Saturn, yeah. And Carmela asks, "Can you help find?" It? He goes, "I don't know my name." And when it became Lojack and everything, but then he goes to his son. This is the part. What are you getting in science? D plus. <laughs> I'll see what I could do. Yep. <laughs> that was a good that was a good quote. Um another one I have for quotes is the one we were talking about a little earlier. It's the one with uh it's with um Paulie Walnuts and he's oh. like you know, the, the they've taken a little pizza <laughs> olive oil. These fucks like, had not bu- no nothing. Buffalo mozzarella. They eat poots before we we give them our cuisine. It was just like you could see the disdain and anger he has that the Italian. He feels like the Italians lost out on so much because they just didn't get on the ball. To, but he's like they they brought everything to them. You could also see the look in Pussy's face too. He's just like so annoyed because he's probably had this conversation with Polly like at least a hundred times in in the past. So he's probably heard this many, many times from him before. So he's just like c- completely just disinterested in anything Paulie's complaining about. Paulie is a complainer. You see that throughout. That's another one. If we're going to say, don't forget about it. You could see his complaining throughout the whole series. He complains about everything. <laughs> um, I got one more quote. And this was kind of like one that like I found myself maybe for like 10 years using in my everyday dialogue. Um when Brendan and Chris are told they have to pay 15 grand back to junior for the truck, uh, Brendan says, not only does he shit on our heads, we're, sub- we're supposed to say thanks for the hat. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's a good scene. And, and you're right. That is something like, 
a lot of people were made to eat crow, and that's basically the sentiment that pe- people felt when they were on the bottom. So I, I have to agree with that. Was a more not even like it was like a more true statement because a lot of people have used that statement. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I thought that was a good quote. Uh, any more quotes? I think I'm tapped out. I got one more, and then it's basically him talking about the DVD players. Okay. And- Talking about how the picture is the same as the laser and everything, but they were talking about the sound is good. And then Tony just comes out and says, yeah, nothing beats popping some over Redenbachers listening to Men in Black. <laughs> I, just, like, <laughs> I thought that was really funny. It was just, and that's like how old it is. DVDs were the biggest thing back then. Right, right. That was, well, I think this was like the, the same time. This came out around the same time as Fast and, the original Fast and Furious where everybody was just jacking trucks full of DVD players. Oh, that yeah. was, it was like pure, that was like solid gold, gold at that point. Oh yeah. The, the DVD players were the big thing back then. Like everybody had to have one. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's um, what I have on that. Okay. Uh, nitpicks. So my, my biggest okay. nitpick would be the, um, the, what's it called? The accent. That's really all the nitpick I have on that episode is you see how much it changed from episode one to episode two. And it's like okay. drastic. <laughs> it's like, I guess he went to Italian school between the episodes and he, <laughs> that accent that he sounded like first he was from, I would say, central Jersey. Okay. He moved all the way down to North Jersey again. Right <laughs> so it, it was very, it's very like you could tell it was really really you know yeah. wasn't even like a little bit it was like night and day 180 yeah in the two years from 97 to 99 when they went episode one to two maybe he had a he had a voice coach in between that time i could see but, doing that but yeah you had, you had told me about this before and i was i was definitely looking for it when i watched the episode and, and yeah it's absolutely it's noticeable it you, became a lot more strong any of your nitpicks? Uh, yeah. So why did they, I, I enjoyed the end product of this, that we got the coffee shop scenes with Tony and Polly, and they got on this essentially a, a little adventure, but why did we care about this school teacher's Saturn? What, I mean, that had, that added absolutely no value down the line. So it wasn't anything we held on to. It wasn't I, anything we revisited later. I think it was a dead storyline. Like, it was literally a dead storyline that didn't make any sense or anything. And then it ends up being like, you know, he realizes that he doesn't have the same car anymore anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my, uh, I had that in questions, comments, concerns, but we can talk about it now. Like, what do you think, what do you think the teacher did with this Saturn? Do you think he drove it or he returned it or? I think he don't look a gift toss in the mouth. That's a, we're going to go with another saying right there. But I feel, I feel like, yeah, he probably knew who AJ's father was and maybe just kept his mouth shut and drove home. Um, now, a couple of the actors that we saw in there, there was a lot. Of, there was a couple that we seen from different places. Friend, friends of ours. Friends of ours. We're going to do that now. I saw um, Mike Epps was in this as Jerome. Yes, he was. Yeah, he didn't really have any. I don't think he did. He, I think he might have like one or two words. It was the other guy who who had the more of the speaking role. But yeah, I, well, then, I looked at this and I remember seeing him and I was a long time ago. And then it refreshed my memory when I saw I had to go to IMDb like right away. I was like, that is Mike Epps, right? And oh, yeah. The only thing he said was Desi. He said Desi in the <laughs> uh, in the flamboyant voice. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was his line. <laughs> So, yeah, what's it called? Going into it, Frank Centronelli, who played Georgie. Okay. In a lot of th- he was in a few things that I didn't realize he was in. He was in Meet the Parents, No Reservations. Okay. So that was one of them. Um, but the guy who played Desi was in a few things, too. Um, don't have him off the top of my list, but he was in a few things as well. Okay. So he's another, another friend of ours. One I had towards the end, the second carjacking. We get uh, J.D. Williams, a.k.a. Bodie from The Wire. Yes, that was, I, you know, I forgot about that at first. But, yeah, he was he was the one who shot the guy in the head. Yep. Uh, he, dro- uh, yeah, he dropped the gun and the calmly trucker, trucking driver, calmly truck driver got uh, shot. He's listed in this episode. His character's name is listed as Special K. But I'm just, it's, it's Bodie. 
I don't care. Fact check me all you want. That's that's Bodie. It's always Bodie. He they, yeah. got, they got him from Baltimore to come help, and that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have any more of those? I, I had Mike Epps and JD Williams as my two. That's I only had Frank. Sitch- all right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, questions, comments, concerns. I did already. I asked about the the teacher Saturn. Did you have any of those? No. Uh, the the only thing I would say is. I wonder if he got caught with that uh, espresso pot. <laughs> you don't him with it in the next scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I'm sure the charges were dropped and the witnesses probably didn't want to testify <laughs> if they did. Um, but that's all I have on that. Okay. Uh, MVP of the episode. Who do you got? Hands down, Livia. I have. Okay, to- we're, we're, we're in sync there. That was mine as well. He was just so good. The scenes with the... Uh, with the person who was watching over her. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to repeat her, her race, her racism, but no, it's just like, you, you see, like you would, she looks so demure and everything, but she is like, like yeah. Said, she's like a bull. Yeah. Which when, uh, which says the Carmela, she's like, I know how to talk to people. Really good scenes, yeah. The the scene in the nursing home where she she doesn't. I don't think she says a word in that scene. She just stares at this administrator, and it was so good. Just yeah, she was on fire in this episode. So yeah, well, glad we're both we're both in sync there. Mushrooms. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. She lit the, she lit the house on fire. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it just everything like, and the way she just she's definitely like you said the star of this episode. Is, it was easy to pick her as the star of this episode. Oh yeah, and I have that as an as another nitpick too. When she ran down her friend, she, she it said that she suffered a broken wrist and a concussion, and I didn't get how that was possible because she just hit her friend. I, unless she unless she killed her, and she was doing eighty miles an hour. It looked like it was ten miles an hour in the driveway. I, so I don't know how she suffered so many injuries. Yeah, I don't know how she broke her wrist and got a concussion because it just looked like all you see was her just jerk a little bit. Yeah. It'll be for the woman who broke a hip. You know. Yeah, yeah, it sucks for her, but tough, tough look, tough look for her. But yeah, it's just like like it's like one scene it, from that scene to the scene right before when Tony's like, you know, you know, we, we're complaining about her, yet she's still driving her friends around and everything. Uh huh. And then next thing you know, she runs it down. <laughs> All right. So moment of truth here. How many boxes of ZD do you give this episode? I give this, this is one of the higher rated ones I'm going to give, and this is going to be uh, 8.5. Holy shit, we're in sync twice, because that's exactly, I'm not, I'm not even bullshitting you either. I'll show you a screenshot on my notes. I've got it, I've got it at 8.5 as well. It was just like, it really, it really defined the show, and it really just shows, it, it goes upwards from here. Like, this is with the show that, like, you know, the first episode was okay, this is the one that makes you want to keep watching. Like it makes Absolutely. You watch the next episode. Good. Yes. Let's see how let's see how many times this happens where we have the same MVP and the same uh, rating. Oh well, you know, we're, we're, I I think we're gonna have a, on, on a few of them. I I know what, uh, some of my I have a couple episodes that actually get to ten. What I've been looking at. Sure, the plenty. Uh, but this is definitely up there. It, it's not the best. But it definitely is the episode that really gets you going and getting you ready to really watch this and see what goes on with these characters. Absolutely. All right. Uh, where can people find you? Or is there anything you uh, want to plug? At the last time, Arcade Wars, if they want to follow me, um, I'm at Twinkie730 on Instagram. So you can follow me there and um, tell them about your podcast, your other one. Yeah, well, you can follow me at ddem2000 on Instagram, and we also now have an Instagram for this show. Uh, it It's the Jacket Pod on Instagram, at It's the Jacket Pod, so we have that um, now. And the other podcast I'm doing is called Was It That Bad? Uh, we, we actually did our second episode on Monday, so that's up now. We did Euro, with, our first episode is Roadhouse, and we did uh, Euro Trip last night, so we have two episodes of that out. And now we have, we'll have two episodes of this out as well. Hey guys, li- you guys got to listen to it. It's really good. They, they, they do a good job getting into these movies that are poorly reviewed, but actually have a lot of value. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And that's um, the Instagram and Twitter for that is at was it that bad pod. 
So you can follow those and follow us as well. And if you want to talk to me and Ant about movies or shows anytime, you can join the Movie and Television Talk Facebook group. Just type in Movie and Television Talk into a Facebook group search. You see the red cover photo, and that's that's us. You can get at us there. A lot of good conversations in there. A lot of great talks about movies and television in there right there. Hell yes. All right, my friend. Well, we uh, we got episode three coming up. We'll get to that soon. Uh, good look, conversation as always. I look forward to it. I love these conversations. Yeah, man. Good times. And uh, we'll get up soon. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Talk to you later. Later. Bye. Bye.